I'm Jake Willers and I'm here in Africa to witness one of the greatest wildlife spectacles on Earth. But it's not happening here in the bush, it's happening out there. Where are these scientists? Off the eastern cape of South Africa, where the ocean is teeming with life. Scientists have been studying the behaviors of fish in these waters to get a better understanding of their place in the food web. Some of these fish, such as sardines, travel over a thousand kilometers from Durban, South Africa, up the coast to Mozambique, followed by hungry predators. Large numbers of sardines make this long journey, attracting fishermen, tourists, and documentarians from all over. The sardine run, as it is commonly referred to, is not a migration. The sardines are not traveling to find food or to spawn. In fact, scientists are not sure why these fish make this annual journey. Only approximately 2% of the sardines in these waters make the dash. But the schools of fish are immense. Predators like dolphins, sharks, and gannets follow in hot pursuit. It's one of the biggest marine events on the planet. How do scientists know where to look for these schools of fish? Good question. The path of the sardines, as well as the time of the year that they run, changes every year. However, scientists believe water temperature is key to tracking the schools of fish. These scientists take boats offshore to document the sardine run. So the water temperatures you were just saying, that's obviously affecting what you're doing here at the moment. Very definitely. That's a major problem for us at the moment. It's uh, warm water, which is sort of normal maybe a month earlier, sort of uh, in, in May. But you know, in June it usually starts cooling down and, and allows the fish to do their range extensions, so coming up into these coastal waters. So they're not going to come out into this warmer water, they have to wait for this cold water to come in? Yeah, pretty much. If the temperature warms up while they're here, obviously they're stuck and they'll deal with it, but generally they, they prefer water to be 19 and less. So guys, I'm itching to get in the water. There's still stuff out there for me to see, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Definitely. What am I going to see if I go on a dive? Well, at the moment you'll see a lot of dolphins, you'll see sharks. So it's a great dive. Superb. The crew makes the journey out through rough seas. I've decided to take Malcolm's advice and head out to sea. What great advice it was. I'm not even in the water and already I'm surrounded by wildlife. These dolphins are shadowing our boat. Which ocean is that? That's the Indian Ocean, which runs south past the Cape of South Africa to Antarctica. The Agalas Current flows southwestward along the southeastern and southern coast of Africa, bringing warm waters. The Agalas is one of the world's strongest ocean currents with a speed of up to 1.4 miles per hour. It is deflected eastward and southeastward at Cape Agalas by the cold Benguela current. Oceanographers believe that these currents mix to bring the waters to a temperature triggering the sardine run. I'm going to head over the side and see if I can find some of the supporting cast. Dolphins are social animals that live in groups called pods. Dolphins communicate using clicks and whistle-like sounds produced by vibrating connective tissue in their noses, similar to the way human vocal cords function. Dolphin clicks are some of the loudest sounds made by marine animals. They rely on these sounds to communicate and locate prey. This is called echolocation. 
Dolphins mostly rely on echolocation and sight to hunt because they have a poor sense of smell due to the lack of olfactory nerves. Dolphins are accomplished hunters, working in packs and herding their prey into bait balls. Individual dolphins will take turns dashing through the bait balls to catch confused prey. There's sharks in the waters off South Africa, too. Yes, there are. And with the large amounts of sardines for food, it is no surprise that the divers are suddenly surrounded by sharks as well. While dolphins rely on sight and sound, sharks rely heavily on their keen sense of smell to hunt. Some shark species are able to detect as little as one part per million of blood in seawater. Sharks also use electroreceptors called ampullae of Lorenzini to detect electromagnetic fields that all living things emit. With an abundance of sharks in the water, the divers leave to look for sardine runs elsewhere. The team of oceanographers keep their eyes peeled for other hints indicating sardines are present. Birds such as these gannets are diving for a fresh meal and the dolphins and sharks are clearly feeding. They use helicopters and airplanes to spot schools of sardines? Yes, scientists take studying the sardine run very seriously in South Africa. This team of oceanographers takes to the sea, closely following the gannets. The gannets arrive here in the thousands to take advantage of the surplus of food. These amazing birds can fly up to 100 kilometers an hour and can dive 30 meters deep to chase sardines. They streamline their body as they dive, so they pierce the water like a spear. Gannets have no external nostrils, making it easier to dive deep for fish. In addition, they have air sacs in their faces to cushion the impact with the water. These traits give them the ability to hunt fish much deeper than most birds. The name sardine is a generic term that applies to a variety of fish from the pilchard or herring family. These small, silvery, oily fish are highly nutritious and a popular food for humans. It looks like the sardine run takes on many shapes and sizes. Yes, it does. Sardines usually form massive schools and head northward. The trail of fish can be 15 kilometers long and 40 meters wide. But the main attraction is the neatly choreographed bait ball. Why do they form a huge bait ball? Sardines group together for protection. Scientists believe that when they group together, they may trick some predators into thinking that they are one big fish instead of thousands of little fish. But hungry predators aren't easy to trick. That's right. The dolphins work together like sheepdogs, separating some sardines and herding them into open water for the kill. It has become a chaotic feeding frenzy, an all-out assault. The usually gentle dolphins have turned into ferocious predators, and as the sardines are rounded up from below, the gannets are attacking from above. The gannets rain down like a barrage of radar-guided missiles, plucking unlucky sardines out of the bait ball at an unbelievable rate. Sardines are commercially fished for human consumption as well. In addition to being high in vitamin B12, which is good for our nervous systems and metabolism, they are good sources of calcium, phosphorus, and potassium. Sardines are also an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids, which can reduce the occurrence of cardiovascular disease. Unbelievable! We found a, a beautiful bait ball. The dolphins have drawn away from the main school, and they're just using their bubbles swimming around what seems like 100 miles an hour, keeping the ball there so they can go in one by one and feed from it. We're down there right beside them and they are whipping past us, it's unbelievable. The sharks are there, maybe about five, 10 meters below, just hanging around waiting for the scraps to come in. 
The fish are incredible. These guys are moving as if they're one. Every time a fish turns, they all turn in unison. And it's like the bull changes color. It goes from dark to silver, all as one. A stunning thing to see. Going back for more. It looks like the dolphins do all the work and the sharks just hang around. Yes, they seem to wait for straggler sardines. There are a range of sharks in these waters, including copper sharks, white tip sharks, and black tip sharks. What if I wanted to be an oceanographer? To become an oceanographer, you will need to study biology and oceanography. You may also want to look into research opportunities at oceanographic institutes as well. Though many sardines are eaten by sharks, dolphins, and gannets, many more survive to reproduce. The surviving sardines release their eggs into the water, where they are fertilized and left to drift off in the open ocean. Ocean currents carry most of the eggs and developing larvae westward and northward into the productive waters along the coast. As an exciting wild event comes to a close, these oceanographers reflect on the incredible scene they have just witnessed. If I never dive ever again in my life, it won't matter after that dive. That was the most incredible thing ever. Dolphins, sharks, gannets, almost flipping over in a boat. What, what more can you want? There's everything there. We can learn about our planet by studying the many intricate events that make up our natural world, and by doing so, have a better understanding of how various species are dependent upon each other. <laughs>